So that was the division of lipids based on their functions. And then they can also be categorized whether they're saponifiable or not. These triacyl glycerols, glycerol phospholipids, sphingophospholipids, sphingoglycolipids, and biological waxes, what do these things have in common? It's a kind of a linkage, an ester linkage, right? They all had at least one ester linkage. The biological waxes only have one. The triacyl glycerols had three. The glycerol phospholipids had four. But they all have at least one ester linkage, so they can all be saponified. These guys over here, cholesterol, bile acids, steroid hormones, and eicosanoids, do not have an ester linkage, and so they cannot be saponified. You put those in a base, and you can't hydrolyze them in a basic solution. So when we say a liquid is saponifiable, I'm sorry, a lipid. A saponifiable lipid is one that undergoes hydrolysis in a basic solution to yield two or more smaller molecules. So we have to have an ester linkage, but the amide and the glycosidic linkages can also undergo esterification. Remember, an amide linkage was like an ester, but one of the oxygens was a nitrogen instead. The glycosidic linkage is what we saw between the two saccharides, two monosaccharides. We saw a glycosidic linkage, and so those are saponifiable. Now I'm getting ahead of myself. So triacylglycerols had three ester bonds. Glycerol phospholipids had four. The sphingophospholipids had one amide and two ester bonds. The sphingoglycolipids had one amide, one ester, and one glycosidic, and the biological waxes had one ester bond. So they all have at least one ester, and some of them have a couple of other things, but they're all saponifiable. <laughs>